Hey Westside, this is Tim Connor, Superintendent of Schools. I uh, want to talk a little bit about our reopening as we go, and part of our reopening has to do with uh, ventilation. Obviously with COVID we've been talking a lot about building safety and all other kinds of health and safety precautions, uh, but we thought it might be good to bring some of the experts to the table so they can better explain how uh, how we check ventilation and how we be sure that our buildings are safe. And so I want to I want to welcome two of our our guests here today. We have uh, uh, Walt from HES Services, and and he uh, is our ventilation expert, and he'll be joining us in conversation. And Scott Moore, who is our director of central maintenance. So welcome, guys. Thank you Thanks, for Tom. being here. Thank you. Um, so let's. Scott, what have we been doing to, uh, to get the schools ready? So we've been going school by school, um, checking all the systems. We're changing filters, upgrading them where possible. Um, Walt has come in and done some representative testing uh, on air exchange. The results we've been getting back so far are very good. They're in the six range, which meets or exceeds the DESE DPH guidelines. Um, so we're testing is ongoing. Um, We've got a good team of guys out there now troubleshooting. We're going school by school. We have um, building automation systems for all the schools. So we're able to monitor everything remotely. And uh, right now we feel we're in pretty good shape. Excellent, excellent. And so what, well, how do you, how do, you do these tests? So, so there's a, I'm listening to this, Scott, and there's some language here I, I don't fully understand because I'm not very mechanical, uh, but what, what is it? What's the process? All right, so what I did uh, was I went to representative uh, uh, schools, uh, some of the schools, but also representative systems in the schools. And uh, what Scott asked me to do was to see what the uh, available CFM uh, rating was for the various rooms. What's and, that stand for? In the school. CFM. CFM stands for cubic feet per minute okay, thank of, you. of uh, air. Yep. And the idea originally uh, was uh, what kind of CFM uh, capacity do we have through the filter? Mm -hmm. So this is a, a, a device, of course, the HVAC system brings air from the, li the living space or the occupied space, takes it through the filter, uh, and, and then brings it back to the room, uh, having been filtered at a particular level of particulate size, okay? Yeah. Very important. Um, and, uh, and there was a, sp a, s a specified um, a MERV rating, which is the rating for the filter uh, uh, type, okay. and, uh, and we were looking to see what we had for, uh, for MERV ratings and, and all that. So the CFM then tells us how often we can change the air in any area uh, each minute, each hour, okay? okay. And uh, the idea was uh, to calculate that. So what I did is I uh, uh, found and calculated how much air was moving through the system, and, um, and then the size of the room or the space that was being serviced and that uh, a calculation can be made from that as to the air changes per hour. And that is what the government was looking for in terms of a, a um, uh, known uh, rate of return. There's an additional thing that we were looking at and that is uh, uh, we can also bring in fresh air from outside. Mm -hmm. And the thing about that that's helpful, of course, is that outdoors, under normal conditions, there's no COVID-19 outside at all. And so whenever we bring fresh air, in addition to the filtration of the existing air, we're improving the environmental conditions. Wow, okay. So, so uh, very scientific, uh, and uh, I appreciate that. And Scott, I know that you've been doing some work around the, bu uh, the buildings as well uh, since, the, since March, of March sure. 13th. Um, and I know that, I know our, our our guys are out there working on the buildings in terms of bringing in that that fresh air. Yep. Can you talk about a little bit of the work that's been happening? And sure, we've been uh, going through, like I said, school by school, um, touching on what Walt said, it is important to bring in fresh air and it's important to know that we do have that capability in every school. Okay. And we also have the capability of controlling that fresh air coming in. So we can increase it, decrease it as needed. Okay. If the um, CO2 levels are a little bit high, they open automatically and start bringing in more fresh air. So. And that only adds to our air exchange rate per hour. Okay. And is that, um, is that universal in all the schools that we have that capability? All the schools have that capability to some level, yes. Okay. And I know, you know, we have some old buildings as well. Uh, one of them will be knocking down in, in a couple of years. 
Uh, but we have some older buildings, and obviously, we'll, you know, furnaces, I'm sure, are different. Um, but how, how is that impacted with your testing versus maybe a, a newer building, like even, even the high school or middle school that are fairly, fairly new? Yeah, so the high school here, I would say, is, is cutting edge. Mm -hmm. This is cutting edge technology for HVAC, uh, for HVAC and ventilation and filtration. Uh, the filtration levels are very high uh, in, in this building, and, uh, and some of the others uh, aren't uh, the same. However, even the older buildings, uh, when I uh, check them out, uh, they have uh, uh, heaters which were uh, uh, put in not that long ago, actually replaced uh, Univent heaters uh, that are in the individual rooms in some occasions, uh, and those actually do pretty well. CFM rating, uh, in other words, the, uh, the ability to take the air uh, from the room and to bring it through a filter uh, a number of times per hour uh, were, were similar, actually, mm -hmm. to the high school uh, in some instances. Wow. And, and also they have the ability to bring in air uh, from the outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scott uh, and his people know how to adjust that uh, fresh air exchange and how to increase it uh, at some times and sometimes with, without any occupancy at all, uh, maybe to, uh, to lower it to save some energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, with the current COVID-19 uh, concerns, we want to make sure that we maximize health mm -hmm. for everyone, the students and the teachers and, and all uh, indoors. And uh, so Scott has the capability to, to do these manipulations and um, uh, one of the oldest buildings, uh, uh, Cowing, uh, I believe it's called, yes. um, yeah. uh, just recently Scott was able to uh, actually manipulate an existing uh, intake of fresh air using uh, existing uh, ductwork. And we're hopeful that uh, with, with some uh, polishing of that uh, activity and, and, and uh, filter, uh, proper filtration, that that's going to help that, that older building. So. When does that work? take place when we so we can um, we can schedule everything through mm -hmm. the building maintenance systems mm -hmm. um, so one of the things we're going to do under Walt's recommendation is we're going to run the ventilation systems longer so the plan is to run them two hours before school opens and run them for two hours gotcha. which we normally do anyways on the back end because the custodians are always in the building till late mm -hmm. so we're going to run those longer periods of time Walt recommended that even though it's probably not necessary we're going to push the envelope on the uh, fresh air intake. Mm -hmm. So bringing more air in. So we're okay. gonna drop the set points down for the CO2 levels yep. to even probably, you know, marginally where they should be. So that way we're just, we're, go we're going over the top with it. We're, good. we're gonna make sure everything works good. Good. So good. we'll start there and then we can back off if we, if we need to, but. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, just today they got those uh, um, makeup air units working at, at Cowing, and we got to figure out a way to filter them, but there were older units that were abandoned, and we got them back online, which is going to be a huge help to get fresh air in that school. Yeah, I know uh, Steve mascagelli has been out there, our HVAC guy, mm -hmm. uh, working hard, so I appreciate yep. all, Steve all and, Peter and, and Peter and Billy and Ray, yeah, yeah. All, all four of them have been yeah, after it. the best, so uh, we appreciate that. There's been a lot of talk or, in, on the news around MERV filters, um, and... I've learned more about MERV filters than I thought I'd ever learn about. <laughs> Not that that is a lot anyhow, but you know, at one point um, folks were talking about MERV 13s, MERV 7s. Where are we with those and what's the, where, what's the in terms of um, state regulations and things like that, where, where are we with those? So the high school already has all MERV 13 or better filters. It's really a, a laboratory quality filter. It's very good. Yeah. Um, we had some concerns in some of the other schools that, um, and, and those concerns have been known statewide that they may cause air to bypass around the filters. They won't let enough air flow through them. Yes. Uh, we tested at Memorial, which is a good um, sampling. It's um, a school that's very similar to, to Tatum and Fawzi. Right. So we use that as a guinea pig, and we actually got really good results with it. Um, we got air exchange rates five and a half, six ish um, without the fresh air coming in, oh, wow. which is very good. Yep. Um, the rest of the schools we have gone through and cleaned all the univents, changed all the filters. We're putting in at least a MERV 7 filter right now. The MERV 13s are on back order. We're being told 90 days, but okay. we've got orders in with several different vendors, and whoever comes up with them first, we'll, we'll go ahead and change those other schools. But 
I'm pretty confident right now we're we're bringing in some nice fresh air and it's going to be a good safe environment. Right. So we have the the filters that we have are above what the the state is requiring at this point. Yes. Good. Good. So so I'll comment on that if you don't mind just a little bit. So people sometimes uh, don't don't know what that means. The MERV the, the rating uh, is done by the particle size, but also it's it's an efficiency rating, and so it has to do with the velocity of air through it and, and its capability really overall mm -hmm. to remove contaminants. So the higher the MERV <coughs> number, the, the better mm -hmm. in, in a sense, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think because of uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, circumstance has, uh, has happened during this year, and I don't think there's a, there's a lot of um, peer-reviewed published information about exactly what the MERV levels do for COVID, particularly aerosols, uh, certainly uh, things we've heard about, the droplets and that sort of thing, right, right. Um, it takes care of that uh, because yeah. MERV is uh, uh, 13 and even sevens and eights are very good for that. I don't know uh, that uh, uh, the MERV 13 level uh, wasn't something that was set uh, uh, by comparison and also uh, possibly a, a somewhat arbitrary in the sense that it's available. Mm -hmm. It's a very high rating, probably better than most home uh, furnace filters, mm -hmm. of course. Yep. Um, but even the lower levels uh, uh, of filters, numbers, uh, do uh, a, a quality job. Uh, some people mention the MERV 13. I think that when we have that, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, other things that we can do, the fresh air and, of course, the source reduction, you know, in the classroom itself or in the uh, places where people are occupying, are crucial mm -hmm. to any of this. Uh, we're not asking the HVA systems to do everything in terms of protection. Right. Uh, right. But, but uh, I think uh, Scott and his people have uh, things uh, well in hand. We know a lot more than we did before, and uh, we're going into the season uh, uh, pretty well prepared. Great. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, you know, there's there's a lot out there in the news, um, and sometimes it's changing quite a bit. But um, you know, one of the things that that you hear is the, um, the in terms of ventilation is the circulation rate. And um, again, you hear different numbers around that. We talked a little bit about the high school. Um, you know, at one point we were we were talk, they were talking that it needs to be twelve. Um, and then that back back down, obviously, I think, you know, our conversation previously, your hair would be blowing <laughs> in, the, in the wind. So um, talk about our, our circulation rates in our, in our schools. Okay. So the, uh, the uh, representative uh, sampling and calculations that I did were all clustered around, around six. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means that uh, six times an hour, all the air, the volume of the air in that room or area, whether large or small, uh, is uh, taken through the filter. But remember that we're also in training fresh air. Even the older schools okay. have the ability to entrain fresh air. And when we do that, we're bringing in a part of the air that comes from outside that has absolutely no uh, contamination of the kind that we're looking at. Yeah. And so this, this reduces the amount of air that actually is necessary for filtration. And even at a 10% uh, rate, which I think is a minimum a level in even the older uh, schools, uh, within an hour, uh, only half the air that was originally in the room, though filtered, is still present. Gotcha. So we have fresh air that's in training and diluting, and diluting that air, so it's important. But we're sitting right around six, um, I'm in, involved uh, in, in understanding uh, uh, various authoritative uh, recommendations from the government. One of them is the government uh, in industrial hygienists, which is an important body, and, uh, the, and uh, they recommend uh, six uh, to hire uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as a good uh, air exchange uh, rate uh, per hour, and uh, we are right in the six. Even the older schools are right in the six okay. uh, exchanges. Good, good. Thank you. Um, so we, uh, we start adding some bodies back into the schools, um, and in that we're, we're excited for that. Um, we're, we're talking about a phase-in approach and bringing kids in and things like that. Um, in terms of density of, of bodies in a classroom, how does, how does the filtration system and how does the ventilation, like you said, with the bringing in that, that air, um, how, how is that? How does that all work, especially when you start bringing bodies in? Yeah. Well, 
we have a way of measuring fresh air exchange, which again is a, a big part of good air quality, right. uh, in direct relationship to the number of people, okay. uh, n number of uh, right. uh, folks that are in a, a particular area, and that is that CO2 level. And Scott has the ability in many of the facilities to actually monitor mm -hmm. and then adjust based upon, based upon that CO2. Now, what does it mean? It means that CO2 is what we breathe out as uh, humans, and we breathe in oxygen, okay? The trees are doing the opposite outside. Right. We're lucky they have so many in uh, New England, of course. So uh, when that CO2 level rise, rises, we know that there are more people and that they're using up the air and, uh, and that that is not necessarily uh, a good thing to have too high CO2 levels. There's no absolute standard for CO2 levels in a classroom, but when something, when it rises, there's something that we can do. And uh, it's a good thing to, uh, to know uh, about that. And of course, fewer people, uh, more fresh air exchange is beneficial. Mm -hmm. And whenever can, we try and balance that in the, uh, in the schools. When you have large numbers of people that are congregating, uh, particularly in smaller spaces, we've heard in the news that this can be uh, de detrimental. And, uh, but having the tools to measure and then to adjust that uh, is really very helpful. Right. And I can kind of give you a a layman's term of how that operates. So, layman, for example, layman is perfect for me. So, for example, at the library, if we have um, a large group of people in the community room for a meeting, and there's 80 people in there, I will get an alarm saying that the CO2 levels have risen because oh, wow. there's that many people. So, yeah. when that happens, the system automatically kicks kicks in, and say the outside air louvers are open at 10 percent, they'll go right to 100 percent, bring in, bring in way more fresh air, and get those levels back down immediately. Wow. Okay. So that's how the, uh, the building automation system works, which is a great tool. And we're, we're very fortunate that we have those in all nine schools. We have all. Oh, wow. I'm learning something new every day. Uh, so, guys, I can't thank you enough. Uh, Walt, thank you for all the work that you've done with us. Scott, to you and your team, thank you uh, for your continued support of the schools. Obviously a crazy time right now for everybody. But um, Westside, we wanted to bring this uh, for, uh, to you. I think it's a lot easier to hear it from the experts than me trying to push this out in a, in a message, uh, messenger, school messenger uh, notice. So thank you guys again, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. Thank